Good evening. My name is William Hewig. I'm cable counsel for the city of New Bedford. And this is the second in a series of public hearings which will be conducted to assist the mayor in determining whether to issue a cable television renewal license to Comcast of Massachusetts. First public hearing was conducted on Wednesday, June 20th. This is the second public hearing. These hearings are a requirement of law before the mayor can issue or any issuing authority in Massachusetts can issue a cable television renewal license. Uh, the hearing is conducted under the regulations and the statutes of the Federal uh, Cable Act and also the Massachusetts Department of Telecommunications and Cable. Uh, the purpose of the hearing is to get input from members of the public about two things. One is whether Comcast is in compliance with its currently existing cable television license, which is a license that is a 10-year license and which will expire November the 19th in the year 2019, about four months away. The second purpose of the hearing, in addition to finding out if, if the public thinks Comcast is in compliance, the second purpose is to determine is to assist the mayor and the cable advisors uh, in determining what should be the city of New Bedford's future community cable-related needs. Um, I began the first hearing on June 20th by telling you that under the laws under which cable licensing operates, there are some things that you can expect to get in a license and there's some things that you, can, that you cannot get in a license because the law would forbid it. Uh, the first thing that you cannot get, although you are free to complain about it if you wish, you cannot get changes in rates. Rates are determined either by the state as a rate regulating authority or they're determined by the market. That's the system in which we live and that's the nature of our laws. So if you um, are coming here expecting that the mayor or anyone can do anything about your cable rates, the mayor can't. But your complaints can be heard by a representative of Comcast who is here, and uh, that might have some effect. The second thing that generally is not negotiable is programming. Programming again, and this is an order and a ruling of the FCC, programming is to be determined by the market and not by any regulator or license granting authority. Um, so we can't do anything about programming changes other than to pass on your requests to Comcast. But if you have requests or desires or complaints about the, uh, the, um, the makeup of programming and the composition of programming that you get from Comcast, again, there's a representative here, and he will be happy to hear uh, what you have to say. Before we go any further, I'll introduce the Comcast representative, Mr. Robert Sullivan. He's here. He was at our first hearing as well. Um, and as at the first hearing, if you have any specific complaints about your cable account or anything particular or, or peculiar to your own cable reception, Mr. Sullivan will be happy to receive the, that information from you at the conclusion of the hearing. Um, uh, so those are the, uh, not really the ground rules, but those are the, um, the things that we can accomplish for you in New Bedford in the renewal of the license and the things we cannot. Having told you what we can't get in general, I will tell you what we can get, and that is money. We can get money to fund public access services for the citizens of New Bedford through the access, corp uh, through the access uh, uh, office of the city of New Bedford. Um, that, that includes the programming, the channels, and the other services you get. Um, and to my left is Mr. Marshall, uh, Mr. Jim Marshall, who is the station manager. Uh, for the uh, New Bedford Public Access, and I'm going to turn the microphone over to Jim and let, you, let him give you a brief overview of public access in New Bedford. We were going to have a video, but uh, there's a mechanical problem with it, so we'll just let Mr. Marshall uh, take the place of that video. Jim. Thanks, Bill. Thanks for all for coming, too. Uh, my name is Jim Marshall. I'm station manager for New Bedford Cable Network, Cable Access, as other people know it. For those that are here, let me just get a quick show of hands. How many of you watch city council or press conferences or school committee? How about football games, concerts? So that's us. That's cable access, New Bedford Cable Network. We are a city department, just like the police, the fire, uh, purchasing, any other, we are a city department. Our funding is provided by Comcast through the Cable Act of 1984. 
and for use of the infrastructure, this municipalities uh, receive money from cable providers. In our case, we get 4% of the gross revenue from television, uh, uh, from the television profits uh, of cable customers here in New Bedford. So we get that money from Comcast uh, every quarter, quarterly basis. We also get, every year we get $70,000 in capital for equipment and uh, necessities to run the facility. Uh, we've been in operation for over 20 years and um, we have a dedicated crew that works down there. To, uh, we chronicle really the city's history. If you ask us what is it that we do, we chronicle the city's history. We are out there. We're taping this tonight. We'll be at the feast tomorrow night. We'll be at the feast parade on Sunday. Uh, we'll be doing some work at schools next week with uh, uh, getting, uh, getting some interviews with school officials. So. We try to be out in the community and we try to be a positive, uh, we try to show the positive things and, that are going on in New Bedford. I should mention, and I, I think uh, uh, it's important to know, this is a non-exclusive contract. There is nothing to prevent uh, another cable operator to come into the city. We have to negotiate with Comcast. They have the license and obviously they'd like to renew it. So we're negotiating with them to renew the contract. If company X wanted to come to the city, they too would have to negotiate a contract with us. Um, don't know if that's gonna happen, but that's just uh, the way, that, uh, way it works. Little background on us. Right now, we have 11 full-time positions at Cable Access. We are one of the biggest Cable Access uh, stations in uh, Massachusetts, really. We have 11 full-timers, as I said. We do broadcasting on three channels. We use all three. We use the public channel, which Anybody in New Bedford is a city resident, or if you're a business in the city, you can learn how to do TV and do your own TV shows. We run the education channel, which provides uh, opportunities for accredited schools in the city to do their own shows, or we can do their shows too. Uh, as Again, we do the football games, we do uh, concerts, we do uh, things with the superintendent, press conferences. And obviously the government channel, which people say that they, you know, people have watched, you know, the mayor does a press conference. We have city council meetings. Any elected or appointed official can call me up, say, hey, I need you here at this event. We go and cover that. And then we put it on TV. Um, and we cover a lot of programming. Our, our programs have been recognized nationally uh, for awards. And I'm very proud of the staff and the work that they do. Um, for the city and, and for you folks that are that are watching on TV or, or here in attendance, uh, because there's a, we have a great amount of pride in the work that we do, and we try to again uh, get out there and show uh, the city in a very positive light. It's interesting too that earlier this year, actually in the spring of 2018, and throughout last year, we did a survey, and it's amazing to see the support that we have, and that. Um, 1,100 customers responded to the survey who are Comcast, and this was done by UMass Dartmouth, as a matter of fact, and uh, so many people watch our programs and they actually want us to do more things with, with us. They want us to cover more events, more meetings, more events. It's hard because we don't have, you know, our staff isn't going up, and we try to get to as much as we can, um, but it, it's nice to know that the community supports the work that we do, and, um, and we try to do the best we can with what we have. One of the things that we're um, trying to do also is, is be able to go live to events. Um, I know we've been working on the technology for that, um, and that's something that hopefully down the not too distant future we'll be able to provide that, and that's something we want to really pursue more. And it's on the internet, you know, Facebook or on TV, and just with the uh, different platforms that are available to us, it's, we think it's important to be able to do that for residents. It's, it's funny, when the mayor has done um, press conferences for blizzards or hurricanes, and I know that uh, Mayor Mitchell has done those, or Mayor Lang, when, when I first started out. The amount of people who watch those live is, is unbelievable, and it's funny because I'll get a phone call after it airs and they'll say, when's the next one? I don't know, it's up to the mayor, but I know people are watching and it's very uh, appreciative to, to see that. Um, our public access director, Charlene Rocha Root, is here, and, and she's done a great job of trying to get the public uh, to participate and do more programming. And I think uh, we're accomplishing that. We're trying to get more shows that the public uh, is taking part of and uh, can claim as their own. As I said, anybody 
who lives in the city, works in the city, is able to do a public access program. You can make your own TV show. There's no, um, uh, there's no editorial limits or anything. So uh, we're very proud of that. And we're non-commercial stations, which is important too. Um, that's uh, uh, something that I think is important because we don't want to you know, be determined by profits or um, viewership. We want to be able to show meetings and, and uh, different events in their entirety as much as we can. Obviously, we're not going to show eight hours of the feast or something like that, so we'll edit it. But I think it's important that the shows or the stations are all non-commercial and uh, the public is able to see that. Um, last thing I guess wanted to mention too, there, there is concern, uh, and it actually comes down tomorrow, that uh, the FCC has taken up an issue. The FCC governs uh, cable companies, uh, and uh, the cable companies are looking to charge back some of the donations, as they call it, that they make to communities. Um, we don't know what the extent of that will be, uh, but if the FCC, the Federal Communications Commissions, if they do approve that, uh, we could receive less money through, with no say. So that'll be an interesting thing to see what happens tomorrow because we really don't know the specifics of what's going to happen. Um, but we'll find out maybe tomorrow. They may vote on it tomorrow, but at least it's going up for discussion tomorrow. And, and that is a concern uh, for cable TV. Um, just on a personal note, I, I came over from Channel 6 in Providence. I was there for years, and I, and I started working here. And I used to say, ah, oh, who's, who's watching cable TV? And it's amazing how many people watch all three of our channels uh, on a regular basis because they want to know the local, local things that are going on. And as one elected official told me, we're probably the last real information venue platform around because there's no editorial comments. It's just we tape, we shoot, it goes on TV. And you, you're able to make up your own mind. So with that, thanks again for coming. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Um, before we get started, uh, and invite the public to make their comments. Uh, on the podium to my left and to your right over here, you will find the microphone. We'll ask you to come up and, and speak and identify yourself by uh, name and your address. We'll also ask you to put your name on the sign-up sheet, so we'll have your name as a record of who all has attended and who all uh, is, uh, has spoken. Uh, and with that, uh, we will open the floor to comment now from the members of the public. Anyone who wishes to speak and be heard, you're welcome to come up to the podium on my left, and we'd like to hear what you have to say. I plan to be here. Okay. My name is Ronaldo, 850 Pleasant Street. <coughs> I'm, I'm disabled. I have to take the bus on to Mount Pleasant, pay my bills. Uh, I know you guys are in business to make money. I'm disabled, and I'm, uh, I got di diabetes. Why you guys don't have the bathroom for, for the plumber? There's no bathroom I have to use. I can't go to the cemetery. I can't answer that question. I'm not, I'm not an employee of Comcast, so. Okay, he's Comcast, all right? No, he's, a, he's the city's attorney. Why well, they don't have a bathroom in there, though? I'm sorry, what was your question again, sir? Why well, you guys don't have a bathroom in there? A bathroom? Bathroom. A bathroom at the Comcast facility? Yes, sir. I, I, I don't, I, like I said, we're not Comcast. Well, it's, it's a business, right? Huh? It's a business, they're taking money. We're not, we don't work for Comcast. We work for the city, city of New Bedford. Well, the city can make them get a bathroom in there? What facility specifically are you referring to, sir? Is you guys can make Comcast get a bathroom in there for the public? The Comcast facility. The, he's looking the at business it. office? Yes. The local business office? Yeah. Well, we'll pass that on to Mr. Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Sullivan yeah, they make big money. Office. They can put a bathroom in there? Well, it's a negotiable <laughs> item, so uh, thank you for your comment, and we'll pass that on to Mr. Sullivan. And see if they so can why you guys are here then? Well, what's, this, what's this meeting about then? I'm sorry, sir. What's this meeting about then? You guys, the, the you guys meeting, from Comcast, right? The meeting is about uh, the public's 
comments about the future community cable related needs of the city and whether Comcast is in compliance with its current license. The current license doesn't require, to my knowledge, a bathroom in the business office. So that's, uh, I think that may be the first time we've heard that request. First time. Thank you, sir. Thank well, you. you, that's a big company. They control you guys too, right? <laughs> Thank you for your time. You're welcome. And could you sign our uh, sign in sheet, please? You're welcome. Yeah. I think there's a sheet right there, sir. We gotta go to the bathroom. We gotta go to the bathroom. We gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah, Walt Winzak, Pine Net Street, New Bedford. And um, this just came to me when you're talking about these, uh, uh, you know, filming meetings and publishing them. Once a month at Ward 5, we have a Ward 5 community meeting at the old warming house, uh, the Senior Citizen Center in Buttonwood Park. And uh, I just wonder why no one comes to there to video that. Is that only because it's restricted to basically one ward in the city? I'll be honest, I've never, we've never been asked okay. by the counselor. So I, that's really the only thing I know. It, it's hard to get to all the, it depends on what's going on in a given night too. Mm -hmm. Again, there's only so many staff members. But in the same token, as I said, I, I've never been asked. So I, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, it's, it's just it's generally the representatives and the counselors come, the police department, yeah. and generally a member of the city, some department, and uh, we talk about problems and things like that. But say no one has ever been there taken. As I said, it, I, so. I, again, I've never, we have never yeah. been asked to shoot it. So. Okay, I just um, want to bring it up. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Jim, maybe this is an opportunity to uh, tell the public how they can submit a request for uh, video coverage of local community meetings. Well, as I said at the start, uh, any elected or appointed official can ask for us to cover a meeting. So in, in the case of this, if, if, Rep, if uh, Councilor Lima requested us, uh, we could cover that. Um, the public if they want the meeting covered can, and they're trained, again, in public access, uh, they're able to record the meetings themselves and put them on our public access channel. So there's outlets to do it. Um, but as I said, the elected or appointed officials, and they could be uh, city, state, federal, um, county, uh, if they asked us, and obviously if you know, we're not being pulled in 10 different directions at the same time, because again, we, we have nine staff members, um, we're able to uh, to cover the meetings, so we got to know about it too. Yes, sir. Good evening, gentlemen. Russell Berman, 34 Derby Street, City of New Bedford. Uh, my concerns are this: uh, what is in the contract for the future of New Bedford's infrastructure in terms of cable? Are we going to go fiber optic? Are we not going to go fiber optic? Is that a contractual concern? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask Mr. Sullivan. I think you probably already have fiber optic trunks. Is that not right? So uh, the city is already equipped with fiber optic trunks. Is that throughout the city? Is that throughout everywhere? So the fiber optic trunks go to what is called a node, and then from the node, it's like a, a wagon wheel. Um, uh, I'm well aware, yeah. sir. I used to work with the company. I also know that fiber optic is not being offered to the general public in this city. In what sense? Not in the sense way. that we don't have it in our homes. We're still limited to the copper wire bro broadband that we all know and have known. So, okay, so we're not getting the extra bandwidth. We're not being able to do the Wi-Fi everywhere. That also inhibits you as community access on doing broadcast live. Because so, when they go with the new nodes, it has to be a Wi-Fi node. With a Wi-Fi node, you're going to be able to use the same cameras and technology that we're seeing currently on A&E on Live PD. So you could actually stream it live immediately when it's happening, which would be a fantastic asset for this city. Now, I understand that he's the representative for Comcast, but I also know that 
it's not being utilized. We're not getting it. I know because I am a homeowner, I've asked for it several times. And what I get from Comcast for an answer is, I have to put in a T5 line dedicated to my house. And because of my distance from the node, that's not possible. Now, that's another question is, how far apart are these nodes? And what is in the contract for the distance between the nodes? So that way we can possibly upgrade our system in our lovely city and have a state of the art like we should. Okay, thank you for your comments. Thank you, sir. Hi, my name is Henry Masti. I live at 20 Roach Street in New Bedford. Uh, I have a question. In terms of, you had mentioned that this is the second contract you're signing with Comcast? Is that what? I'm sorry? Is this the, you, you were talking previously about a 10-year contract that's now up to Correct. renegotiate. So are you saying that in 2009 there was a contract that was established with Comcast? Yes. But probably before that. Yeah, it was. It was 1999, and it was with Media One, uh, a, a network that was set up. And the question specifically that I have is that at that time, there was something I think called uh, an INET that was supposed to be set up. And not only were you supposed to do the programming that you discussed, I also believe that there were going to be cultural institutions that were supposed to be part of this network. Can you address those? I'm not familiar with the 1999 contract. I wasn't here then, and so I, I don't know. Well, perhaps the uh, person from Comcast, uh, Jennifer Curry Newcomb, uh, Jennifer Curry Newcomb, worked for Media One in 1999, and as she, her career blossomed, she now has a title that's called Senior Vice President of Corporate and Digital Communications. I'm just curious what happened with the rest of the cultural institu institutions, specifically the Zeterion, the Star Store, the Whaling Museum, the New Bedford Art Museum, and I do know that a couple of schools that were mentioned, and the gentleman that talked specifically about the fiber optic network, I thought that was what was supposed to be laid in 1999 on the corner of Union and Purchase Street. Just curious about it. I'd have to look. I don't know. Please like I said, I wasn't, wasn't around in 1999. So. <laughs> I hope you uh, were. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe not here. Uh, uh, may I ask you again to list the yeah, I'm gonna institutions do that you uh, identified? Oh, the sure. Museum? Absolutely. I'll get out of the way and I'll, I'll listen and bring it back, okay? So. And uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to be heard? If so, uh, please step up to the uh, podium and sign it. The Councilor at Lodge, Brian Gomes, New Bedford. I would like to know, um, we went to your first meeting that was held at Keith and you know it was expressed there. I would like to know from Comcast if there has been any con concessions made to um, the general public that pays the bills all the time. Um, that was a, a concern on the senior side of it. You're, you're the same man that was sitting there. You represent the, the city as far as this contract is concerned. And what? in this contract so far is beneficial to the city of New Bedford. And please, I'm, 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 I, I feel that this, and if I'm wrong, tell me, are we holding uh, cable channels in uh, hostage because of this contract? It would out, 
is that what this is all about, or is this a meaning is about um, getting the best contract for the city of New Bedford and the best for, for the people that, that this um, mayor sh and uh, we should be signing and not um, giving them just that rope to go and do whatever they want. And again, the increasing cost to our seniors, there's a lot of people that are not here this evening. And you know, this meeting is being held at six o'clock, some people are just getting home. I would, I would like those questions asked if there's someone that can answer it or if you can answer it, sir. I can't answer your questions, uh, Counselor. I'm not even here to answer questions. We're here to get information from the public. If there's anyone in the room who can answer the questions, I'd be happy to ask. When we asked, when I asked last meeting, then I was here. <clears throat> Are you okay? All set? Yes. When I was at the last meeting and I asked for additional meetings to be held in the city, I, I, I realized that I received a call from the mayor's office telling me that this meeting was being held. But besides Mr. Sullivan, where are the representatives from Comcast that can make the difference uh, in what we're looking for? Again, I'm looking for the best contract and something that gives some, um, you know, easiness to, to the general public. Um, I, I realize that we need our cable access channels. And what I, I, I was trying to say to you is I feel that they are almost being dangled in front of us that if you know we don't get this that may be going away that's not going to go away that belongs to it as long as i've been part of this and i'm around back in 99 and i'm sorry that i couldn't answer some of that gentleman's questions because i've been through a couple of these but this one i think is more important than ever is because the cost for cable uh, um in the city of new bedford and what again are going to be the benefits and maybe mr sullivan can answer that but that's what i wanted to be answered to the general public before we enter into any type of contract with uh, comcast Mr. Sullivan, um, let me. Councilor, sorry to put you on the spot, no, but no, you, have, you have been the representative at yeah, these absolutely. two meetings. So, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bob Sullivan, and uh, I work at a condo from Brockton. And my role is um, to do the license agreements, the contract. Um, I don't know the technical aspects. Um, I'll give my cards. I mean, I've given a few, I'll give them to as many people that want to. Um, call me, I'll get the answers. Um, Councilor, I, I can appreciate, as I told you, I'm a city councilor in Brockton, so I can appreciate what, you, what you're saying. All I can say is my role here tonight is to listen to suggestions, criticisms, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then take it back to my supervisors so that when we, Comcast, myself, and my supervisors get together with the mayor, the council, Attorney Hewitt is an assistant solicitor I met before, we, we can negotiate in good faith. Um, that's all I can say at this time. I'm, I'm happy to get together. Councilor, that's better than what I heard last time. Last time I was told when we were at a meeting by the uh, assistant city solicitor that uh, basically there's almost nothing that we can do. We have to sign a contract with you or Comcast is going to shut the city off. I don't believe that Comcast is going to shut the city off if we don't enter into an immediate contract with them. I believe that they have to be a good negotiator, uh, just like any business, and give uh, the, you know the best deal that the city is looking for also. And we shouldn't just be writing off on 10 years to go along. And if we can't get what we need or we want on behalf of the city and not dangling again our cable channels in, in, in any way that uh, a threat that that's going to be taking away that um, we get the best deal and not even sign a 10-year contract possibly maybe just a three-year contract while we continue to look and see how we're going to um, um, get this ca uh, Comcast to recognize what the kind of services you know the commercials are great on TV they're beautiful but I'll tell you an example I had a problem my TV has been giving me some funny colors um, while I'm watching it for some reason. So at first I thought it would may have been something with the weather or whatever, but it kept continuously happening. Two days ago, called. You know what the, what the service started with when you called to um, ask about repair service or whatever? They wanted to tell me about a bill, about your bill. We didn't call for that. And it takes a long, lengthy time uh, of different questions that up when people are just calling for service. Maybe the two doesn't mix, but it, to me, it does. And again, it's a hindrance on the people when they just call for service and you gotta go through a long, lengthy, um, press one for this, press two for this, press that. My cable is not working. Can you imagine to our grandmother, 
sitting in her apartment trying to maybe get the cable system. They don't understand it like we do. Uh, they don't understand the implementations of what goes on in the billing and, and all that. Uh, and that's some of the things why I'm standing here tonight that I think is very important. And it's been important to a lot of people in this city. And as I said, many of them are not here this evening. But at the same time, they've got great concerns about it, and I've got concerns about it, and I want the best contract for the city of New Bedford. And this is not about standing here to criticize anybody or criticize Comcast. It's about doing the right thing for the city of New Bedford, and we don't enter into anything that we're going to be stuck in for 10 years with getting nothing back, and again, the increasing costs on, on the citizens of, of this area um, is not one that, that this council is looking for, and I know many people are not. Thank you for the opportunity, City Solicitor. Thank you, Jim Marshall. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Um, is there anyone else who would like to be heard on anything relating to Comcast? Hearing none, uh, we will bring the uh, public hearing to a close. Uh, thank you all for attending. Um, and uh, the the negotiations will be based on uh, what is called ascertainment, that is what we hear from you folks, what is important to you folks. So um, you should uh, have confidence that the folks that are going to be negotiating with Comcast will have your very best interests at heart and we will negotiate the best agreement that it is possible to negotiate within the terms of the laws and regulations with which in, within which we all have to live. Yes, sir. Sorry, Council. Um, how do we know that they were in compliance with the first agreement? Well, one of the purposes of our uh, public hearing is to try to make that determination. Uh, members of the public can assist us by telling us, for example, as the counselor did, uh, that he's been having trouble with the customer service department. We all have. Um, well, uh, you're part of the equation. You have to get those complaints to us somehow so that we know whether Comcast is in compliance, and they are required to comply with certain customer service obligations and signal quality obligations. So if you, have, you or anyone you know has been experiencing signal quality problems, uh, let us know. That's how we know you have to tell us. And one of the purposes of the hearing is for us to learn and understand if there are compliance issues. So you don't have to necessarily tell us tonight but if you have got uh, an experienced uh, technical problems with your signal quality, let this committee know. Let us know where you are, let us know when they occurred, how long they occurred, and the nature of the problems, because Comcast is obligated under FCC technical regulations to deliver a signal that meets certain specified qualifications and standards. And if you turn on your TV and there's a video breaking up or audio breaking up or you've got snow, or you've got other problems or it goes on and off, then I can tell you that doesn't meet FCC technical standards, all right? So you have to let us know. And similarly, as the counselor did, if you've had problems with the customer service office reaching them, I can tell you that FCC uh, customer service obligations obligate a cable operator to answer the telephone within uh, 30 seconds 90% of the time under normal circumstances, and you're supposed to be connected with a live human being, not a phone tree, not a recording. If that has not happened to you, let us know, because those are obligations of the cable operator, and if they're not meeting them, they have a compliance problem. I see some heads nodding. Um, folks, you've got to let us know. You know, we won't I'd know that you're having room. these problems unless you tell us. I would so. say the whole room, sir. Well, I just want to say, too, that the, um, you can issue a comment to the city and the email address, we, uh, they're up until Friday at 5 o'clock, I believe. The email address is cable at newbedford-.com. Oh, dot ma dot us? Okay. Dot com. Okay, so it's cable. Actually, you should probably <laughs> say it. Because it doesn't come to us. Yeah, so my name is John Carvalho. I'm the public information officer for the city. So the uh, other options besides the public hearing uh, for residents to uh, give us their comments uh, would be to write to the office of the city solicitor if they want to do it in writing by, by mail, which is at 133 William Street in New Bedford, 02740. Um, 
and just put attention cable contracts to the uh, city solicitor's office. The other option uh, would be to send an email to cable at New Bedford, all one word, dash ma dot gov, G-O-V. And that's also been aired on the cable network. It's been published in the Standard Times so that people who weren't able to make it here tonight um, were, were able to weigh in. Thank you, John. Yes, sir. I think the term that the council was referring to in this picture is pixelation. So when you talk to them, use that term. <laughs> now, I had a problem with pixelation, and I went along for a long time, and they sent people over until I found out that some of these guys were contractors. They weren't Comcast people, and they didn't know anything. Do they still use contractors in their service department? Yes. The answer was yes. Well, as I say, the service people were useless. Again, yes, uh, Counselor. May I just ask, uh, Jonathan, is, when is the deadline for the general public to send in their comments? So, Counselor, the deadline that we set right now is this Friday, August 2nd, at 5 p.m. If we receive it after that, it'll still be. I'm going to ask that, Jonathan. That we, again, um, publicize it, and, and even if you have to get on the radio or the television and, and express the people that you want to hear from them, and that even extend that a, a, a little bit of time if it's, if it's possible. And I think, it, I think it's possible. We'll do that. It's a contrast in wait. And just expand it so you really get a thrust of what's going on with the station. By the way, for what was here, my TV still isn't fixed after they sent the new, whatever they call it, through the system or whatever. Last night, the digital was up. still fixed up. We gave up. We gave up. We gave up on the digital. So again, my main thrust was that we continue to get to the public. Thank you, John. Yeah. If we could have emails or letters from all of you folks, oh, that yeah. would be helpful. Okay. That's, that's the purpose of this process to hear your complaints and your comments about compliance and future needs, okay? Um, and I, uh, uh, I, I think we heard that that deadline will be extended, so everyone out there should know that you have a, that your voice will be heard by those of us who are, are going to be negotiating the renewal license with uh, Comcast, okay? Any other questions or comments from anyone before we close? Counselor, last word. Have a great evening, everybody. <laughs> Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you for attending. Uh, good evening.